Many of you may not know, but way back in 2018, I released my own game called Tube Tycoon. Uh, it was a YouTube simulator where you could create your own channel, record fictional videos and reach top subscriber scores. The uh, game is still available on Steam, but most importantly, it has been completely built in the Unity UI system. Like 100%, there is no single sprite in this project. Over the years, I have learned multiple techniques on how to build optimal user interfaces. In this video, I will show you a few different techniques on how to increase your game UI performance and we'll do all of that on the Tube Tycoon project itself. But before you speed up your UI, you first need to build it. This is why my Master Unity UI course is currently on sale. Join hundreds of happy learners, click the link below and learn ins and outs of the Unity UI system for 20% off. Valid until September 8th. Okay, so let's start with the main component of every UI. Canvas. Canvas is the unit unit uses for batching and rebuilding UI. If you have your whole HUD in one canvas and a tiny element updates frequently, the whole canvas gets rebuilt, costing CPU time and GPU draw calls. So the solution is to split your canvas into multiple smaller canvases. Look at this example. Here we have a main screen with the background, other elements and this button that is constantly being animated. To make this interface more performant, all you need to do is to make sure that your sections are grouped and to add canvas to each of them. Uh, if your section also should be interactable, just add graphic ray caster. I have used exactly the same technique in my Tube Tycoon game, where I have multiple screens that switch between each other. Uh, for each screen, I've added a separate canvas to make sure to redraw only what is needed. In a second, I will show you a technique on how to increase batching and speed up drawing calls, but before that, let's talk about animations. So if you ever researched animations in Unity UI, you might have encountered some guides to not use Unity Animator at all costs, because it redraws the whole canvas even when nothing changes. This used to be an issue in the past, but Unity has patched that. That still gives you two paths how you can create your animations. You can create them using Animator with standard Unity timeline, or using twinning engine like DoTwin or LeanTwin. Both of them have some benefits and drawbacks, which I covered in detail in the course. I recommend using code-based solutions unless we are working with more complex advanced screens. In my game, for example, I have used animator for complex animations like this intro screen, while for common animations like dialog, open and close, I have prepared this universal script model animation that allowed me to unify many element animations. Next up, scrolling list. As you can imagine, scrolling can be very resource intensive. Uh, the good news is that if you set it up correctly, Unity should handle most of the cases fine. What I mean by set up correctly? Well, when you define a scrolling list, you should follow this structure scrolling parent with scroll view, then a child, which is a view, and then content child with all scrolling content. View child should obviously have a mask. Here, use rect mask to the if possible, it's way more performant than normal mask. And finally, make sure that scroll view has viewport value set properly. Without the viewport, Unity will happily keep rendering all your off-screen UI elements, even if they are far outside the scroll window. But if your list has hundreds of elements, here comes a different performance improvement. Even if an element is masked and completely invisible, Unity still generates the geometry for it and includes it in the batch. The solution is to implement a dynamic scroll view, also called infinite scroll. It limits the amount of game objects spawned on the scene to minimum. When any given item goes off-screen on one side, it comes back on the other side with different data. 
I wouldn't worry about that for most implementations, but if your list is very long and starts to lag while scrolling, check out the link below for the GitHub repo with such implementation. Next up, also quite important, image optimization. Here I would like to show you quite an important optimization too. If you want to really understand what's happening under the hood with your UI, the frame debugger is your best friend. You can find it under Window, Analysis, Frame Debugger. Here Unity shows you every single draw call that happens in current frame. You'll see how it breaks your canvas into separate batches. This tool makes it very clear when something is costing your extra draw calls. Usually objects that look the same should be drawn on one call, but if you see that similar game objects are drawn separately, check if they are using the same sprite or if you don't have any unnecessary effects attached. Then be sure to use texture splitting. Those two buttons have different sizes, but they are on the same batch. How? They use the same sprite with correctly defined splitting that allows you to stretch them however you like. More on that in my other video. And then also don't forget about the sprite settings. When working with Unity UI, you should have all textures set to sprite 2D and UI. Image sizes should not be enormous. For example, here there is no reason to have such a large texture for such a small icon. And finally, I advise you to disable MIP maps. That will greatly reduce your game size and memory consumption. Okay, and now last but not least, complex layouts. In my free first hour of the Master Unit UI course, I talk a lot about anchors and layout groups. They are quite important to make sure that your UI looks good on any screen. But they come with a hidden cost. Every time the layout changes, maybe you add a new element, resize the window or enable an object, Unity has to recalculate the positions of all children in that layout group. And if you are nesting multiple groups, then recalculation can cascade through your entire hierarchy. So my tip here is, use layout groups while building UI, for example to arrange a few boxes, and when the content is not dynamic, just disable it before publishing your game. That way you will sort of bake their position. If you will ever need to make some changes later, just re-enable that in the editor and make your changes. Okay, and that's it! Uh, fortunately, optimizing the UI is not that hard. If you like to learn more tips and tricks on how to build from simple to complex interfaces in your game, join hundreds of happy learners in my Master Unit UI course. Click the link below to get Master Unit UI for 20% off.